Every time I think I know where the market's going, it does the exact opposite. And today is no different. So it was to my surprise as I woke up and I took a look at the market, and it looks like a, a nice green day is going on. Now, this is quite odd because we've had uh, negative news come about. Uh, there's different issues with the Federal Reserve. There's issues with a, a pending uh, recession looming in the United States. Also, a uh, pending recession globally with the problems that are going on in China and Evergrande and their uh, pending litigation and bankruptcies for their different cities that they have been building and uh, nobody's living in them. So it was quite nice to wake up and say, hey, Bitcoin's up 3%, Ethereum three and a half. Now, if we take a look on the 24 hour, things are looking good. Now the seven day is a different story. Seven day, we have been getting hit hard. So the question I have was, well, what is going on? What could potentially reverse this? Or is this just a temporary fix? Well, today, after hours, we're supposed to hear of the NVIDIA earnings report, which it looks like uh, the revenue could potentially be 11 billion plus. NVIDIA is responsible for uh, manufacturing all the chips that are being used for artificial intelligence. And this is going to be a big play. So we'll see what happens, but maybe somebody knows something and they're betting quite uh, heavily. Also, uh, Jerome Powell is gonna be coming out on Friday at 10.05 a.m. Eastern Standard Time as he uh, gives a speech from Jackson Hole and everybody will listen to this to see if he is, uh, I don't think he's gonna pivot, but if we're going to be continuing pausing or higher for longer as far as Fed rates. So with those two things going on, maybe somebody knows something and somebody uh, has bet the right way. So what I think is, how's the S&P 500 doing? Pretty good today, actually. And uh, started off uh, quite a little rally and kind of tapered off. Over five days, still pretty good. A month, yeah, it's taken a hit, but six months and of course a year, we're still looking pretty good in the traditional market. So I take a look at all these things and go, well, things are looking pretty great. So what's the bad side? Well, the bad side, and again, things fluctuate so, so quickly, is... And I wouldn't even call this bad. It depends on how you look at it. And me as an investor, I think this is quite good as the price of Bitcoin drops and I'm able to pick it up for cheaper and cheaper prices. I don't know where the bottom is, but if we take a look at the 14-day RSI, and this is from TradingView and also uh, given to us by Coindesk, you can see that the 14-day RSI, Relative Strength Index, is the lowest it has been since the beginning of the pandemic in March of 2020. So three and a half years or so, we're looking at an oversold territory that we haven't seen for quite some time of the panic that was. So if we take a look at this and go, wow, that's, that's uh, quite a sell-off. So maybe this is a time to really back up the truck and start loading up. Well, you can do that, but I can just tell you that, well, two things. First, it's good to know that there's this much sell-off and there's this much fear in the market because when people are fearful, you should be a little bit greedy. But then the question is, well, is this one indicator I should look at? And this is a great thing, but when these when RSI matches up with the MVRVZ score, which this is the market value versus realized value, and the Z score kind of takes out all the noise, this is at this is from uh, lookonthebitcoin.com. You can find the link in the description, 100% free charts. But when these two things line up, and we can see that uh, back in the good old day of March of 2020, it lined up in this specific area, and you can see that in the green area might not be a bad time to accumulate. And it also flashed again in 2019. And it just flashed not too long ago in November of 2022, when Bitcoin hit its cycle low around 15,700, somewhere around there. But if we take a look right now, it hasn't hit that point yet. So I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you that uh, at this point of the cycle, it looks like things are quite oversold. And if we actually break this down, and we take a look at the max scale of Bitcoin, going all the way back to 2013 to present, we can take a look at this logarithmically or linearly. If we take a look at it uh, linear, it doesn't make a lot of sense, everything kind of flattened out, so it's very difficult. But if we do logarithmic all the way through, we can see that in the different cycles, we're doing pretty good. And to, to make this quite easy for you, I made this little chart. And everything starts with a halving. And the first halving is in 2012. And then after a halving, we have an all-time high, 2013. 2014, a dip and a reset. Then we go through a halving, all-time high, a dip and a reset. 2020, a halving, all-time high, a dip and a reset. So right now, if we take a look at things, where we are at, we're at the reset plate. And if we can see, in just taking a look at 2015 and 2019, we can see that it was pretty volatile. 
but it seems to be matching 2019 quite nicely, actually. In 2015, it was uh, kind of flat, a little bit of a drop off in September, and then up a shot. And then in 2019, it just kind of uh, went uh, pretty well. Half of the year did great, and the other half not so great. But in September, we took another dip. And then, of course, it flattened out and decreased until the next year, until the halving. And we had did some pretty good things. And 2023 is kind of lining up for that exact same thing. Now, could this uh, match up perfectly? Nobody knows for sure. But I can just tell you, again, if we take a look at uh, the big days, which are all-time highs, 2013, pretty good. 2017, up into the right. 2021, ah, double top. And 2024, 2025, well, 2025, because we have a, a halving coming up in April of 2024, I think we're in the right place at the right time. So uh, there is that piece. And I will just warn everybody that even though we're going through this, this stage right now, we're kind of uncertain. Even when we get to the major bull market, just remember that during the big bulls, and this happened in 2017, it's not straight up into the right. I really did miss, I, I, I misspoke a little bit. You're still gonna have pullbacks. And in 2017, we can see the pullbacks were 38%, 33, 36, and 29. So if investing was, was easy and everybody could do it, so much the better. But it's hard and it's difficult. And there's gonna be days where you're like, what am I doing here? And those are the days where sometimes you just have to grind it out. And then lastly, I will say, as a little bit of uh, hopium for everybody, if we look at the hash rate, this again, looking at Bitcoin, hash rate, I don't know if you knew this, but I hadn't heard anything about this, but we hit an all-time high yesterday. So we hit an all-time high, well, actually a couple of days ago. And the hash rate is the amount of output all the Bitcoin miners are using to mine Bitcoin. And it is expensive. We have enormous companies globally they're betting big. And uh, I would say they're reasonably intelligent people. And if they're putting this much funds into Bitcoin, they're doing the same thing that you and I are doing. We're pretty much just saying, you know what? We don't care what the price is today because we think as time goes on, things will appreciate. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then for all the good news I give you, I got to balance it out. I'm sorry to do this, but uh, it just kind of tempers expectations. There's a couple of things that concern me moving forward. And one of those is the money printer. Uh, if we, and of course, this is Ben's website on the Cryptoverse. is linked in the description. You can get 10% off the first month. If we take a look at the money supply, going all the way back to 1960, this is M2. This is not broad money supply. This is US printing. That's what we do here. You can just see that if we overlay the S&P 500, it goes in a straight trajectory. And we can see that things just go up and to the right unless there is a recession. We can see it happen in the early, actually the early 90s, actually all the good 1970s, then 1990s, then 2000s, then 2008 when the Great Recession, even though we were printing money, things went down. And then of course we come over here to coronavirus, very slim. And we had a little recession, but uh, recovered quite quickly. And right here at the apex, you can see that we stopped the money printing we started quantitative tightening, and you're gonna see that the S&P 500 actually dropped off a little bit. However, we almost did hit an all-time high just a couple of months ago, so keep that in mind. And then of course, if we take a look at uh, crypto itself, the total market cap, and let's, uh, let's zoom in just a little bit. I guess it's the same thing. When the money supply goes up, Bitcoin goes up. So the question is, are we really moving money around or are we just printing more money to put into it? And the same thing happened here when we turn up the money printers, down it goes. So if uh, Jerome Powell comes out and says, you know what, uh, at some point he says, we're gonna pivot and they're gonna probably pivot because they broke something in the economy. Let's, we're, let's uh, start quantitative easing again to, and uh, we start printing money. Then I think we'll be off of the races. But there is one more thing that is a concern. And if we take a look at the treasury yield spread in 10 and three, we can see that it has inverted over here and it's coming at the point of uninversion back to baseline, and then usually what happens is we hit a recession. It happened over here in 20, <laughs> 1990. It happened over here in 2001. Inversion here. What happened in the Great Recession? We had an inversion beforehand in 2006, coming in 2007, and we had the recession. The same thing happened, inverted again uh, before the pandemic, and we did it again 
2022, and we haven't hit that point. So I know people say that the recession is like the worst thing of all time. In all honesty, if we're looking to get back to that magical 2% uh, for inflation, that's one quick way to do it. And I am ready for it. So let me just think about that in the comments section. And then uh, just to finish up, a couple of uh, corrections. Uh, we know BlackRock's here. Everybody's happy about it. BlackRock ETF, great. And there's been a lot of speculation of wallet number three, apparently, three months ago. Someone, some entity, some corporation, some whoever it is, they bought 118000 worth of Bitcoin, and the balance was $3 billion. And everybody was speculating that it was BlackRock. Well, it's not. And I didn't really want to talk about it because I'm like, I, there's, there's no verification. I mean, it makes a good story. It sucks people in. That's fantastic. But I just wanted to see some verification. And so far, we have this. This is from Bitcoin News. Uh, you can follow them. There's a link in the description. They state the unknown address that accumulated more than $3 billion became the third largest Bitcoin wallet, belongs to Robinhood Markets, according to Arkham Intelligence. So that would make a little more sense. Robinhood getting, of course, has been in crypto for years now, and uh, they need to reserve as well, and Bitcoin's where it's at. Now, does it really matter in the long run? No, not really. BlackRock's still here. The narrative is still set. I don't even care if the, the, the spot ETF doesn't get uh, approved. The narrative is there. I think we're going to do pretty well. And then lastly, to finish up, I want to, want to give a shout out to World Mobile as they finally launch on uh, Google Play Store. If you don't know what uh, World Mobile is, it is connecting the un unconnected. They're using telecommunications. They have a crack team with decades of experience, and they're being, this is already built on Cardano. They're using that as far as the ecosystem, as well as aerostats to bring telecommunications and internet to people who do not have it. So I will link this in the description so you can figure out what World Mobile Token is. But I'm just glad to see that uh, the token has utility. And it's actually being used. And it's going to be used globally. And uh, this is going to bring telecommunications to people who don't have it. And before anybody says, but Rob, doesn't everybody have telecommunications and it's only third world countries? Look, there's places in America that doesn't have any kind of internet service or phone service. So this is welcome. I don't care how it gets there. Let's get it done. So congratulations to World Mobile. And also, I want to thank everybody for uh, the shout outs uh, for helping us figure out uh, who was a good charity case or a charity provider for the uh, uh, Hawaiian people that uh, went through the massive fires. And we said, we did a live stream, we said, what's a reputable charity organization? And we'd like to donate uh, some funds. And we were going to use the, um, the funds from the Cardano stake pool that we have. But uh, in essence, we took it from some other places from Friend Tech. We used the proceeds that we got from there, and we used our own money, and we donated $1,000 to the Hawaii Community Foundation.org. There's a link in the description if you'd like to donate it yourself. We gave 1020 and uh, I think it's a good cause for people that uh, are really suffering over there. And then uh, also, just so you know, uh, next couple of weeks or so, starting in September 4th, which will be like 10 days from now, I believe, we will be at Korean Blockchain Week. And we'll be doing some interviews and uh, meeting people. But uh, if you're in Korea, why don't you stop by, say hi to me and team from Dan. And uh, a lot of good speakers over there, Alaire, Buterin, Hayes, Belshi, uh, Nywal from Polygon. And oh, look at that, the Mooch is gonna be there. And Sergey. So, that's what we have going on. So we'll be doing uh, updates over in uh, Seoul, Korea. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next one.